Hello, welcome to episode number two. Today we're going to be taking you through setting up your ChatGPT account so you can start using it on your day to day. Let's first establish what ChatGPT is. So it stands for Chat Generative Pre-trained Transformer and it's a large language model based AI chatbot. Sounds pretty easy, right? Well, don't worry. The way you can think about it is that ChatGPT is kind of like a turbocharged version of Google search. So let's start with a little comparison. Imagine you're Googling something, right? You navigate yourself to google.com, you type in your search query, and as a result, you get about 10 or 20 links. Upon tapping one of those, you'll hopefully get an answer to your question. And if you're doing a bit more research, you'll probably need to tap into a couple of those and combine the information behind them into a larger chunk. Now with ChatGPT, the situation is a little bit different because the way it works is it's essentially a conversation flow. You start off with a question and ChatGPT responds with the relevant information. And the more specific your questions will be, the more tailored to your needs the responses will be. But I'm not here to tell you about ChatGPT, I'm here to show you ChatGPT. So let's kick it off. In this video, I'm going to take you from where you are right now to you having your very own ChatGPT account and using it like it's absolutely nothing. All right, so we're going to have a couple of steps on the way. Step number one will be creating your ChatGPT account. In step two, I'll give you a very quick overview of the user interface. Now, step three will be the exciting one because you will be writing your very first prompt and we'll see what the response is going to be like and we'll follow it up with a couple of extra questions. Next, we're going to look at a couple of real life use cases and we'll finish it off with a couple of tips and tricks so ChatGPT can work even better for you. So what you'll need for this video is a web browser, can be Chrome, Safari, Firefox, whatever you use, and either a Google, Microsoft or Apple account. So if you have both of those things, we can dive right into it. So I've navigated myself to my web browser. I'm using Safari, but feel free to use whatever browser you feel most comfortable with. In your URL bar, type in chat.openai.com and you'll land on ChatGPT site. Alternatively, you can navigate yourself to Google, type in ChatGPT and the first link should be the one taking you to that website again. So in their website, you can already see a couple of example uh, prompts that you can try and use once you log into ChatGPT. But for now, let's click the sign up button. And we're going to have to authenticate using one of the three methods that I mentioned before, which is uh, Google, Microsoft or Apple. I've already created a Google account specifically for the purpose of this demo, so I'm going to use that. Now let's type in a couple of details about yourself, your name, surname and date of birth. Now your phone number and OpenAI should have sent you a message to your phone with a code. So make sure you input that code into the text fields and hit enter. And there you go you've managed to successfully set up your brand new ChatGPT account. Hope that was easy to follow. Now let's jump into the user interface. So in the bottom right corner, you see the text field. This is where you type in your prompts and right above it is where you're going to see your whole conversation. And since this conversation isn't started yet, you'll see a couple of examples of what you can ask ChatGPT. Over on your left hand side, you see a sidebar, which is currently empty but will fill up as we start using ChatGPT. Here you'll see all the different conversations that you've started. And at the very top of it, you'll see a new chat button and a button which allows you to close this sidebar so you can focus on your conversation. In the bottom left hand corner, you'll see your name, your avatar if you've set it up and the more button. After tapping the more button, you'll see logout, settings and customize interactions. In the settings, there is not much to it. You can change your theme between dark or light, clear your chats, and specify if you'd like to allow OpenAI to use your chat history for training purposes. 
The custom instructions area is a new feature of ChatGPT and we'll talk about it in a future video most likely. But for now, all you need to know is that you can use it to save information about yourself, which might help ChatGPT give you more relevant answers. And you can set the way ChatGPT will respond to you. But don't worry about that stuff for now. And the last element of the UI I wanted to mention is the fact that you can select between ChatGPT 3.5 and ChatGPT 4. However, ChatGPT 3.5 is free, whereas the latter requires a paid subscription of $20 a month. The difference between them is that ChatGPT 4 is a much more powerful model. It has a lot of extra features and any new feature will be available to ChatGPT 4 users first. But for the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to stick to the free version with ChatGPT 3.5. All right, with all that out the way, let's get right into it. So let's kick it off with our very first ChatGPT prompt. Let's ask it how it's doing. And the answer is pretty underwhelming. I'm just a computer, I have no feelings, blah, blah, blah. So let's find out what it can help us with. And it responds to us with some valuable information, with a general explanation of what it can help us with. So let's start with some research. Let's ask it about the moon landing. And it seems to have quite a lot to say about the moon landing. But what if we're in a bit of a rush? Let's try and customize this response to our needs. So I'm going to ask it to give me the information in a much more concise manner. And there you go, you get a customized response tailored to your needs. Uh, in this case, it's a three to five sentence long explanation of the moon landing. Now, if we want to get silly, we can ask it to make a poem out of it. And as you can see, it can do that as well. Now let's have a look at a scenario which I actually use almost every day. It's all about food. So let's ask ChatGPT to give us a recipe for lunch. And as you can see, it's quite capable of doing that. We got a quinoa and chickpea salad with lemon tahini dressing. Sounds, sounds quite nice, actually. But what if we would like to customize the recipe? For instance, let's say that I can't eat quinoa. Let's see if it has any alternatives. Great, so we found a couple of alternatives for me. And now I believe it's time to go shopping. But before we do that, let's write down our shopping list. But of course, ChatGPT can do that for us as well. Let's ask it to write one down for us. Great, but when I go shopping, I usually go department by department. And so let's customize the shopping list to sort the items by, by where they would usually be found in a grocery store. And that's cooking with ChatGPT. It is extremely useful, I must say. In the next scenario, we're going to try and use ChatGPT in the office. There's a lot of documents and letters you might need to send, and ChatGPT is the perfect tool to help you with that. So as an example, let's try and get a raise with ChatGPT. I need a raise. I've been 50% more efficient, done workshops for clients without being asked to, onboarded new employees, and found and fixed inefficiencies in our ways of working please write a formal letter to my boss of up to 300 words. And there you go, a full letter in a couple of seconds. This one is a bit on the longer side, so let's shorten it down a little bit. All right, great, that's a bit better, but let's customize it to mention the economically difficult times that we are in right now and ChatGPT use that information and, and modified our letter. And this is just one example, but there are so many different areas at work where you can really use ChatGPT for copywriting and helping you out with some of the more mundane tasks. You can also write um, presentations, documents, reports, all that kind of not so fun stuff, which ChatGPT will probably do faster and better than, well, at least I would. The next one is travel, and that's a pretty good use of ChatGPT as well. So in this case, I will be embarking on a little trip to Sicily uh, with two friends, and I want to find out what I can do out there. So let's see what ChatGPT has to offer. 
Great, we have a travel plan for three days, sorted by the time of day and with activities, meals and hotels. And of course you can customize the trip to your liking uh, depending on what activities you're interested in, what kind of cuisines you'd like to discover. So really there's no limit to how you can modify it. Let's jump into a couple of those tips and tricks that I've mentioned earlier. One of the best tips I've learned when using ChatGPT is to organize your workspace. When I started off, I would start 20 conversations a day and the sidebar would be an absolute mess. So what I encourage you to do is to keep it down to the number of conversations that you actually need and continue the ones you've started. So for instance, based on our example, we can already organize our workspace a little bit. So we can remove the, the one about the space landing because I'm actually not going to continue that research, but the one about diet and the one about my upcoming trip to Sicily and the one about getting that raise might still be interesting to me. So I'll rename those and keep them there for future reference. Another tip I wanted to share with you is that ChatGPT is not only great at writing text, but also really good at reading text and giving feedback or opinions on it. So in this example, I'm going to copy paste an essay from the internet and ask ChatGPT to give some feedback on it. And ChatGPT will give you a list of all the alterations that you can consider in your work. So in this example, we're using an essay, but you can also use that for any text that you're writing, whether it's letters, documents, um, messages, etc. And the last trick I wanted to share with you, which I've already mentioned a couple of times, but I can't stress this enough, is to make sure you take full advantage of the context that you're creating with ChatGPT. So you'll start off with one question and you'll continue with a second one and third one, but the conversation keeps going. And so you can really fine tune your discussion points. So an example of that in my usage is that the conversation I have about my diet really specifies how many calories I want to eat per day, how many meals I want to have. So having this conversation, every time I ask it, give me another dinner recipe, I don't have to specify that I want it to be healthy, high in protein and low in carbs. It knows it already. So it makes the interaction a lot quicker. And all I have to do is just ask for another recipe and it gives me exactly what I need. So there you have it, folks. That's how easy it is to set up your ChatGPT account. And I really hope that I've given you some sort of inspiration on how you can make ChatGPT work for you. And please let me know if you have any great examples of how you use ChatGPT or if you have any great tips and tricks to share. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.